Happy Wednesday, Joy here. We're gonna get a little bit inky. Gonna give this a few seconds, minutes to see if um, anybody hops on. So um, tonight we are going to be working with the lovely bouquet stamp set. Um, and we're gonna get inky because I know not everybody likes to color. Hi Lisa, how are you? I'm just bringing out my other screen here. Let's see. Just trying to get situated. You know how that goes. Trying something a little bit new. All right. And it looks like I need to turn off some volume on my end. Hi, Shalana. How are you? Um, let's. All right. Got the volume off of my computer. All right. So. Um, hi, Sean. Hi, Sandy. Hi, Shalana. It's inky time. So you know that this was um, one of my favorite stamp sets of the last re um, release, but not everybody likes the color. So I want to show it in different ways that we can use it. But before we do that, let's talk about ink. So we all have these glass mats, or I should say a lot of us do. And you're going to get different results with a glass mat versus like a Teflon mat or the craft mats like that Tim Holtz put out. You know, they're all over the market. So I'm going to show you the difference with those. I am using Canson XL watercolor paper. And mine is like 9 by 12. So these are 4.5 by 6. Again, these, these don't matter as far as um, um, what sizes you are. Here, let me get this started again here. All right. So you know with Canson XL, there is a rough side and there's a smooth side. So it's hot press and cold press combined. I always stamp on the smooth side because you get a better impression. But let's talk about the inks. Um, I am using some of my, what used to be some of my favorite inks. And it's been a while since I've given them some love. So we're going to use, we're just going to smush these down. So anybody that's new to card making, this is just called ink smushing. We're not like reinventing the wheel or anything like that. Um, I don't believe that you can get these inks anymore. And I apologize for showing you stuff that um, you can't get. Hi, Linda. How are you? Uh, let's see. Uh, Sandy, my back. My back is much better than it was even three days ago. Um, I swear I thought I was like one sneeze away from being paralyzed. I know that sounds like a drama queen here, but that's how it felt. So this is a new bottle from um, Spellbinders. And what I like about it is if you trigger it and let it go, it'll like continue to do a fine mist for a while. And then if you do short bursts, it just does like a regular squirt bottle. So I'm just putting some water down. So when you ink smush, again, right now, I don't care what size we're on, but this is watercolor. I just kind of, pick it up and see what I'm going to get. So you're going to see I got some really cool nuggets because I didn't use a whole lot of water. But let's see what this looks like once we start putting more water down. Now you're getting more of a watercolor effect. And at that point, I would say kind of be done. You can always come back. You can always use your heat gun. So now the one thing with this is with a heat gun, if you dry it in between applications, then you're going to preserve all of those little like hard lines. And I actually like that. But again, do it what you like. So uh, I'm going to go ahead and push, you know, just ink more of this up. And it's all about getting the textures. I know the feeling I used to be flat on my back once a month for the longest time. Oh, it's terrible, wasn't it? You know, my grandma used to always uh, have a bad back, and I never really understood what she was going through because, again, I was, you know, just a child, and I thought she's just, you know, complaining for the heck of it. But um, I, now that I'm 29 multiple times, now I'm finding out that it's a real thing. So that was the glass mat. And I'll be honest with you, I got a lot of the nuggets and the um, texture that I like and I was surprised on that. So this is um, one of those mats that came with the Tim Holtz travel mats. So this is still like the Teflon and it sticks nicely to your 
desk if you don't have water down already. So I'm going to use a different color. I'm going to use this Blue Moon. And let me see. Let's see if I'm missing anybody's comments here. All right. Yeah, Linda, I'm glad too. It was it was starting to be um, kind of a pain in the rear end. I'm not gonna lie. So now we're putting down a Vegas strip. And if you guys don't know, I used to call this my boyfriend. Well, it was my boyfriend. And so the gems that are in the store that are called um, Boyfriend Blue. It's after this named after this ink. Now the ink is called Vegas strip, but it's what I called it. So do you see how this beaded up? with um with this teflon mat that's how you're going to get a lot of those nuggets and i'm just kind of pushing those down see how we're getting a lot of that stuff so i am going if, you, if the heat gun bothers you please mute I am not looking for perfection tonight. Just what I just wanted to hang out with you guys. Um, let's see, I'm gonna refresh my screen because it seems like I'm not seeing a whole lot going on here. As far as that goes, okay, ink switching is just so much fun. Yes, I agree, Lisa. So I just kind of keep working it, and look at that. That's like the best underwater background. In fact, we might save this for another project that's coming up soon um, that I'm going to do maybe a video on. All right, so the other thing is, let's when you spray this. Do you like that? It's like spraying everywhere. If you run your hands through it, I never said that this wasn't gonna get messy. I mean, I fully, full transparency, I'm already starting to have my hands a mess. That doesn't bother me. If it bothers you, please um, wear gloves. I'm thinking another smush. Now, again, you do risk contaminating your, your pads if you keep smushing onto a dirty surface. That doesn't bother me. Um, I say it's mixed media, and a lot of times you can just take a piece of paper, I'm sorry, like a napkin, and wipe it off, and it's fine. So we've got a really good watercolor effect, and you definitely could be drawing this in between. Hi, Judy, Daisy. Hi, Rick. I love messy. Yes, I I agree. Something told me you liked messy, Rick. I don't I don't know why why I got that impression, but something told me you did. So let's also talk about. We were having a discussion in our design team page today um, about like zigs. So let me wipe this off a little bit more. So I have Karen Brush Pro markers. Um, you could use any watercolor thing, but you can just kind of like scribble these down. Same as you're doing with your ink smushing. So I just want you to see that you can do this technique with more than just ink. You can use your watercolor, you can do whatever. So in reality, this is already beaded up. So let's just see what we get. And you're just gonna get exactly the way it showed, like it looks on the on the screen or on the um, mat. I, however, am going to add a little bit of water because who wants to see those scribbly lines? And it's really important that you understand your color wheel. So I am using colors that are analogous, meaning that they are close to each other on the color wheel, like next to each other. That way they don't make mud. So if I were to use red and green, you would get mud. If I were to use um, um, orange and blue, you would get mud. And if you want mud, please do that. But look how, like, how pretty that is. And that's just using a different medium. I use this fluorescent orange is how I got that. All right, so 
Now I'm going to wipe this up. And I think I'm kind of done with this mat just because I never really use it, to be honest. I mean, you can tell that because I, it's brand new and it looks brand new. All right. So another thing I like to do, and we're going to start showing this with the beautiful bouquet here in a minute. Now this will make some of you nuts. I go directly down and I go real heavy. And I don't even care if I get like that octagon in there. That doesn't bother me. Again, if it bothers you, please don't do it. Uh, what markers? They were the Karen Brush, Karen Brush Marker Pro. I got mine on Amazon. I know that um, Simon has them. A lot of places have them. And I, again, I'm just using colors that are close to each other on the color wheel, meaning not opposite. So that looks really messy. Lisa says, oh, wait, I already have those. Uh-huh. I have a feeling that if you cleaned your craft room, you're going to find out you have all kinds of stuff. So with this, we can really get this water moving. And you're going to get a painterly effect. Now, I'll be honest with you. I don't love um, the octagon in the center. So because this is watercolor paper, you can kind of sop it up and then you can reapply. Now I would recommend, again, if you're worried about what your ink pads look like, that you would possibly, you know, clean it up, dry it in between. I'm trying not to have all of your, um, I'm not trying to have the heat gun going full speed ahead. So this is a very moist, wet, piece of paper at this point. But do you see how you can make that run? So you're getting a watercolor effect. You're not even working hard at it. Now that's going to warp. Now I would say to let that dry, you know, overnight and let it kind of flatten out. If you're impatient like I am most of the time, then I would tell you to go ahead and use your heat gun. Um, and then you can always run this through your die cutting machine, just like the sandwich without a die, and you're gonna straighten that panel right out once it's um, once it's dry. All right, so I'm gonna put this one aside because like I said, this one is sopping wet. So we're gonna talk about things not to do, and I am like the queen of what not to do. I have already embossed lovely bouquet. So I don't know if you can see this one, but I, I embossed this one in clear. So I had dirty stamps, so I, I locked a lot of that black ink in there. So I probably will not use this um, use this panel. But another, another effect that you can get is by using uh, blending brushes. Now I have these blending brushes. They're by the rabbit hole. They're, they are in the shop. If you haven't tried those, try them out. They are my favorite. But you can start blending. Do you see how that flower is starting to come to the top? So Lisa's saying that her uh, her craft room is getting there. She's been working on it for a few weeks. I'm very proud of her. When she's done, I'm going to fly her to my house so she can start working on mine. She hasn't consented to that, just so you know. And she has seen my craft room. She knows not to not to touch it with a ten foot pole. Um, I'm going to bring in my favorite color again. So you can just use the edge of it. And then you can kind of, I like to drip it down. And then because this is already heat embossed, you don't want to 
reheat it otherwise you're going to do it. The other thing is, do you see how my flour is not really well, there's not a really good impression there? That's because I overheated it. With watercolor paper, if you overheat it, it actually makes your embossing powder eventually sink down into the paper. So I would say do as I say, not as I do. But I think that that's really cool how that's kind of dripping down. And let's see. Let's grab another one. And I know you guys can't see these. Um, most of these are going to be um, just on the diagonal, but I do have a couple that are um, on both sides. So now you're really, I'm just showing you that that, that embossing is there. And I normally would never scribble like this on there, but I want you guys to see it so that you can decide what you want to do with it. I find that the uh, Karen markers work really well on Bristol Smooth. I am using watercolor at this point. And I'm just kind of letting those colors meld together. And then anytime I want to stop the running, I'm going to start blotting it. So again, with watercolor paper, it's very forgiving. You can almost start with a pastel version of what you already had which is what I'm doing on purpose because we're getting big, more bang for our buck because I want some more textures and colors. So now I'm going to use this bubblegum color. different striations in there. So I want to scribble this orange down. And I'm doing that on my glass mat at this point. And then we can go in and smush. And it turns out really pretty. Now with, the, with this being a um, bigger or larger panel, you can you can uh, trim this down to the, to the quote unquote pretty parts. Do you see how pretty that is? Sunset colors, yes. A such a vintage color vibe crazy how it went from bright to pastel it's all because it's on watercolor paper now to be transparent there are all kinds of watercolor um, papers on the market so you're, you're not stuck with just Canson XL I'm not a watercolor colorist clearly so I don't even spend the money on like the real good stuff but this has never served me wrong so far and then I don't know this one. All right, so I think I want to do this really dark purple. And I'm gonna do this like pinky purple. And I'm gonna do muscle. I think this is, oh no, this is blue raspberry. So those of you who have Maker Forte inks, because I know there's a few of you in here, you um, CADs and is a it's a good one to play around with versus the expensive papers. Yeah. So with I'm trying to see which one I have here. I'm gonna do this one. And 
the reason I did that is I just wanted a watercolor effect. So by rubbing my hand over that, it kind of like breaks that up a little bit. So that's actually kind of pretty. So I would say let's go ahead and melt, not melt this one, but heat this one. So I'm gonna put this one on my low setting. Well, I'm not gonna put it on high. So right there, I'm kind of preserving all of those nuggets of color. And I'm going to reactivate some of this ink. this dry and we're going to come back to it because I'd like to add a little bit of blue to it but we're starting to get a little bit muddy in our colors another thing that you can do is you can use your reinkers I'm getting purple fingerprints on my white cabinets probably not the worst thing I've ever done in this room Also use your inkers. I always kind of shake mine first because mine sit for a very long time because I'm not very good at the whole maintenance thing. Your ink blending will improve 1000% if you actually re-ink your ink pads. Shocker. Hey Becky. Becky, how's your daughter doing? I didn't talk to you today to find out. Sorry about that. I've been actually, I crafted a little bit today, which is shocker. So now I've got these ringers. And you're going to have even more vibrant. This is a piece that does not have any stamping on it. Look how absolutely insane that turns out. I actually like this technique the most. I know that it usually kind of freaks people out to do it, but this is what I like. I would probably let this dry and then I would start ink blending black ink over it and I would have one heck of a, um, of a uh, galaxy sky. So that's how I start my galaxy star, or skies, excuse me. Um, but, I know that's not necessarily, I just sprayed my microphone, people. This is funny. And that right there, I would completely stop. What's that? That's my favorite tool. Hello, ink pad maintenance is like marker maintenance. It needs to be done. So I try to refill my markers like once a quarter and as needed, and I clean all the tips and all the marker itself. The more gunk you leave on your markers, whether they're alcohol markers, Tombos, whatever, they're, they're not going to perform. I mean, think about your kitchen skillet. If it's full of stuff and full of crud, it's not going to cook your food correctly. So if you, you've got to clean it, well, it's the same idea with markers. And then sometimes I'm guilty of not you know, doing the best with the marker maintenance, but it's true. It's the number one thing that you can do.
Hi, Lisa Newman. How are you? I was looking at your chicken card again today, and let me tell you something. I can't get enough of that card. It's just so pretty. I've never seen those chicken looks look so good as what you did with that slimline card. I knew that this the minute it was posted that I had to have it. Where is Bonnie to Bonnie O'Hara? Good to see you. All right. So let's see if I can find a purple. Okay. Although pink and purple make, or pink and blue make purple. I'm lying to you right now. I'm going to shake this. This bad boy doesn't want to come out. We'll find a different purple. Lord knows I have a lot of them. This one's a little bit darker than I wanted, but who cares? Looks like it looks black when I put it on the mat. I'm in bed watching videos. You know what, Bonnie, that's how I go to sleep. And it's funny because um, Sean always teases me. He's like, if I have to hear those girls' voices one more time. And the funny thing is, it's like, I sound like a duck. So <laughs> it just cracks me up when he says that because out of everybody's voice, it would be mine that I would run from. So use whatever you have in your stash. This is like no rhyme or reason. We're just... We're just playing. I really just wanted to hang out with my people tonight. Like, I'm not trying to reinvent the wheel, do anything earth-shattering. I just wanted to play. So, my friend Christina with uh, Copictopia... Her and I gave each other a challenge last night. See how neat that looks. Uh, we gave each other a challenge last night that we are both trying to become a little bit more visible online, like on the socials and stuff. And we want, you know, we're just trying to get our names out there. So her and I have challenged each other that we are going to go live or do a video. We're going to try to do something every day for a month. Don't hold me to it. I'm trying the very best I can. I do. I go to Creativation at the end of the month, but I'm going to try as much as I'm here. So just know that either on the YouTube channel, on Facebook, somewhere, I'm going to be doing all of, oh, holy cow. I'm going to be doing something uh, one way or the other online. And then if you go over to Copictopia on her YouTube channel. I think she does everything on her YouTube channel. But if you go over there, you can check her out. And if I haven't talked to you enough about Copictopia, Christina, for one, is just one of the kindest human beings that I know. And she just started her company right around the time that I did. She was doing retreats, but now she's doing stamps too. I think that's my favorite one, you guys. Um, but anyway, I'm going to be going to her retreat um, as an attendee uh, in May. I think it's like the 29th-ish. It's in North Carolina. And um, I'm going to hang out with her. Some of my products will be used um, for like make and takes. And, um, and then, of course, her stuff will be. But there's some really good teachers. It's, it's going to be uh, Christina. And I know Tina Goodwin is going to be there who's absolutely an amazing background artist. Um, she teaches Copics, but they don't do just, they don't do just Copic coloring. They make cards and like, it's a well-rounded um, retreat. And I'm gonna be hanging out there with my friends. I have a lot of friends going. And, oh well, flowers. Yeah, so Lisa's saying Mark, May 16th through the 19th. So she has very few seats left. But if you want to hang out and be crazy with me, I mean, last, I think last time I was there last year, 
uh, my friend Kathy and I got inside of an inner tube that was the shape of a flamingo and we literally ran around the room. We were out of breath. The two people who have respiratory problems, we were running around inside of a, of a um, inner tube and we had a blast. I mean, and I don't go to retreats 90% of the time to learn things. I mean, yeah, it's it's fun to like to say I, I I learned something, but nine times out of ten I go just hang out with my friends. So if you think you need new crafty friends or you want to hang out with me, because you know, I'm always gonna be your friend, um, sign up May 16th through the 19th. It's at the jury inn. You will have um, I'm loving that background. You will have meals provided by jury in so our breakfast and a kickback meal and then she provides lunch so i don't know what that's all going to be i'm not in on those details again i am a paid attendee meaning i paid to go so i have nothing to do with this it's just a freaking blast you guys so there's that so let's clean out my desk i said that this is like the 17th time today that i excuse me, that I've cleaned this desk. So we have this background, still very wet, so this will dry a little bit more pastel. Watercolors, inks, any of those things always dry back a little bit. It dries back a little uh, more pale. Look at that. So this isn't like uh, Linda, or am I gonna go to create in Columbus? I am not going as a company, but I'm going probably so I can come see you, Linda. But yeah, I do plan on making at least at least one day, if not all the days. Um, and Sean's down there cringing because he's like, oh no, how much does this cost me? Look how cool that turned out. So these are four and a half by six inch panels. So you absolutely should count, trim these down so that the prettiest part. Now we're all gonna think different parts are pretty. So there is not like a right or wrong. Oh, I have one more panel. Let's, let's, let's play one more time. Let's play one more time. I think, I think I want different colors. This raw raw skirt is like a neon pink. I don't know if it's gonna come through because it's a. I don't actually know what kind of ink this is. I always say it's like a hybrid, even though the person who developed them said that they're all dye inks. Um, but they have weird properties where they like like the the neons. They kind of like push and pull color, and I'm I'm a huge fan of them. But I've never 100% figured out the whole property of it and to be honest with you do we care we just want to play so all right we're gonna use my sprayer one more time see how that one doesn't want to move because it's got it's got some sort of property in it But look how stinking awesome that is. All right, I'm gonna dry this one because I wanted to preserve some of those nuggets. These always remind me of um, the are you crazy test where they say, here's your ink blot. What does this look like? That's what this reminds me of. 
All right, Bonnie, I have a question for you. Do I have your permission to dump this down? Because I know you said you like this orange flower. I'm going to wait for you to respond, Bonnie, so hopefully you're, you're paying attention and not, and you didn't nod off and sleep. Are you with me, Bonnie? If Bonnie doesn't answer me in about 10 seconds. All right, I'm dipping it because I want to. Basically, all we've done here is emboss resist, so you wouldn't have to put all these, um, all this wet ink down. You could do it with a brush. You could do it with sprays. I, you could do all kinds of things. All right, I think that turned out super cool. So I'm gonna let that one dry. So what you can do? Let's take this one. All right, so you could absolutely go in. That was probably like a big glob of um, of uh, embossing powder, was it? Let's see. You know what, guys? This actually are, is not embossing powder. That is just the way the ink did its thing. Could you imagine roses in these colors? Um, yes, I could. Yes. And Sean, if you're listening, feel free to buy some. So you could go back in with your Karen markers or any watercolor flower and you can start coloring on these. And get different textures. So that would be what you would call an underpainting. So you do all this dipping and then you could sit there and color these out. So I have a water brush. So I have a real water brush. Actually, this is a this is a um, brush that I got from Christina's retreat last year. So I just I don't have a thing of water here, so I'm just putting it on my desk, and then you can start to paint that out. So you can change the colors of your flowers with your markers so um, all right so here where there's some purple I'm gonna put some red in or what is this color magenta And I'm just kind of putting them like where the white lines are. And you see, I'm, I'm not doing anything. Why am I coloring with your kiss? Lisa, don't make me be silly. And you can put some heat, like anywhere you want it. Like guys, if I can do this, you all can do it because I am not a color a watercolorist. Now, if you want to see like real watercolor, you need to ask Rick to do some coloring. See how that's just bringing that rose to life? And then if you want to go over to this rose, here, we'll do it with this leaf. I'm putting in this dark, what is this? Is this neon violet? And I'm doing this on the leaves now. 
if I wanted um, this to be a like a true flower, I wouldn't have, you know, dipped into purple for my leaves, but this is my card. I can use my imagination. When it's your card, you do whatever, you know, you want to do. And I want to add some here, here, I think I want to add some up here. And the reason I'm not like cleaning my brush like majorly is because these are all next to each other on the color wheel. So they're not going to like turn to mud. So those areas that didn't color in, you can absolutely start to color those in yourself just like that. And then you're going to have all different striations. Yes, Bonnie, it is. So yes, and Lisa's right. This is a this is a fantasy flower. So this is a very much a wet panel, but I would cut this down. I happen to like this white edge. I don't like this orange that's in here. So sorry, I was out of I was out of um, frame. I don't like this orange because I'm a sloppy crafter. So I would cut that off. So there's that. So does anybody, I have a question. Does anybody know how to know, like when a piece of paper is actually dry? When you take your heat gun and you start drying, it's gonna buckle like this. When it finally starts to dry, it'll start to flatten out and sometimes even curl the opposite direction. So I would say that if we were like to try to emboss on this right this minute, that we would have um, a hot mess because everything would stick to it. I feel like this one, now this is very, very moist. So I'm just kind of dropping in some color. I am scribbling, you guys. I like. When I say, if I can do it, you absolutely can do it too, because this is simple. This is, you know, elementary. This one here, we have a stamp set called um, Torrential Rain here right now. Ugh, Sandy, I'm sorry. Emboss first, watercolor second. Yes, absolutely. Rick says. All right, so this here reminds me, like you guys said, of an Arizona sunset. So I would probably use the brighter days ahead stamp set and if I have it here I'll show it to you should we dry this and see what it turns out to be come on let's do it let's do it I don't know if you guys could tell I'm not very good at this, or I, I never claim to be, like, I, I am not a mixed media artist. But let me tell you something, playing in the ink, it is so relaxing to me. And if you can tell, I'm actually having a lot of fun. because it's still wet.
we're going to play around with this and see which way um, is the best way. Because we've got a big enough panel here that we can do whatever we want. Since this is still semi wet, I'm going to use. I do have a sticky mat in this um, Misty, but since we're um, working on a wet background, I'm going to go ahead and and use the magnet. Um, which way do you guys like it the best? I feel like it wants to go this way. But I feel like that sun should be orange. Am I being too literal right now? I wasn't literal with anything else I did. Oh, I like it the other way. You guys are really seeing like live, like all the twists and turns that I, that goes through like making design choices. So I'm picking that up. Now I've never stamped with this stamp set. So I am rubbing it to get all the residues off. You can absolutely use like a microfiber cloth or this is one of those Sweden rags. Um, I think I showed you guys that. Since this is clean, I am going to use my shirt just to dry it off. Usually that's why I wear black because I don't care if I end up messing it up. But again, you guys be conscientious of whatever you're comfortable with. So I am using First Fine Claire, and that's because it's really crisp and really dark, and it works nicely on watercolor paper. I have no idea where my stamp press is, so here we go, using the chart again. Rick Atkins, if you like it, you know somebody that could probably provide that to you. Um, I actually ordered more because I'm going to Mesa. So we have enough in stock that if you twist my arm, I might be able to send it to you. Now we did not get a very good impression on this. Um, and I think it's because it's, I've got a wet panel. So let's go back in. And I'm hoping that this did the shift. So I am going to stand up and I'm going to do CPR. All right. What do you guys think? Like that required no coloring, no ink blending, and a whole lot of happy, happy. <laughs> Let's see here. So this is going to be a landscape card, obviously, clearly. And so what I do is I just use the edge of my plastic bar to kind of line things up. And this is, I said six and a, six inches, so. Let's see. That's four and a quarter, so that's way too short. I'm just I'm just playing, guys. It's four and a half. I'm sorry, five and a half. And then we're gonna take this to four and a quarter. 
Now, for me, I am quite okay with exactly the way this looks. Other people would be like, eh, I don't like all this um, extra on the edge. So we're going to take it down to, let's say, five. And that way we're kind of getting it lined up better. And then I'm going to take this, since I went to five, I'm going to three and three quarters so that we have like an equal dimension. Sandy, you're killing me one day. You're like, I hate the white. The next day you're like, let's keep the white. I never know what to do with you. But look how stinking cool this is. So you could absolutely like do some ink blending around the edge. I personally would leave it alone and just mat it on black. So let's see what that can look like. Because you know I've got it over here. So let's go ahead and cut this down. What do you guys think of that? I personally love this. Um, let's see what sentiments are in here. You guys, I was totally doing the lovely bouquet today and we just totally moved on. So I guess that's the, um, I think that that's kind of the thing about when you're doing backgrounds and ink smushing, you never really know, um, Sandy says her brain obviously can't decide either. Um, you never really know what you're going to get until you're done, you know? So we've got, you are strong, sending good thoughts your way, hugs, deepest sympathy, sending love, holding you close in my heart. So very sorry. Here's the brighter days ahead. Joy comes in the morning and the darkest hour is just before dawn. I don't know who needs to hear that today, but I know that things have been really rough lately for a lot of people. How do I know? Because I, I talk to a lot of people online, and I think that for all for all of us that are struggling, because I struggle in the wintertime, like I have seasonal, dis however you say that, seasonal affective disorder, whatever, basically, I need a lot of sunshine. So... I'm going to use that one because it, it speaks to me and I'm hoping that it speaks to somebody else today and I am going to use this magnet because clearly this is not sticking. And no, guys, to my design team, I do not have my team room in here right now, so don't judge. I always hold my Misty up so I can look at it to see, you know, like, does it make sense before I stamp it? And again, I'm going to rub my hand over it to remove the residues. stamped everything that we have dipped this is my favorite who knew I wasn't doing this today now because it's me and I'm extra where I have some of these like lines that aren't as crisp I would go in with I don't know what size is this one this is a Copic multi-liner so I would kind of draw those in a little bit And I would not have had any, I don't like this one, it's too thin. Um, I, I wouldn't have had to do this if I had waited for my panel to be 100% dry. Well, I'm just going from smaller to smaller. Let's see. We'll go with the point. 
0.7. So you could use a micron pen, you could do any of these. I'm just using what I have next to me. These were my Christmas present to myself. I bought myself um, some new Copic liners, multi-liners, but again, um, you could absolutely use a micron in this. And I'm just kind of making those solemn lines. And I am absolutely done with this card other than matting it. Does anybody have an idea of what's gonna be next with as I mat this card? I know somebody watches my channels. We're gonna pop this sucker up. So I'm cutting this down to three and a half by four and three quarters so that it fits nicely on the back of my panel. And I am totally leaving that white, just so everybody knows. Matte and white, nope, I'm doing black. Bonnie, you're not winning this. I normally Bonnie wins. You know, normally she she dictates to me what I'm gonna do, but I'm a black matte kind of girl. And I'm going to go ahead and use my barrel art glue. I always use my glue on my, this is adhesive, so don't get me wrong, you don't have to use the glue. I do it because I want the extra second or two of wiggle room. Whew. Having my personal summer again. What do you guys think? I personally, like I said, I didn't have any of this planned. I was flying by the seat of my pants. I love this. Put it on a black card base. I, yeah, I could have done that. Thank you, Becky. That makes the colors pop. I agree. Um, now, one thing that, I don't know. How do, you guys, how do you guys feel about stickles? Would you put stickles down on that sun to make it sparkly? So, at least I need to add it to your mailbox. Okay. I don't know if I'm going to ruin this. I, like, I always have this, like, love-hate relationship with, like, with stickles or color pops or whatever. Because you never, like, am I going to love it? I don't know. Oh, I love it, you guys. Can you guys see that? Do it. Can you see that sparkle? And then that's going to dry just shiny, not not matte in any way. So all those colors are going to be like a prism in there. All right, one more question. Should I fill in this big cactus that looks like it's you know a hand, or should I leave it alone? Anybody? Becky's probably gonna tell me to do it. All right, I'm not getting any feedback on that, so we're gonna leave it alone because stickles are stickles, and once you put your hand in it, you're done. So, this is my card that we're gonna call done. I did stamp it a little bit crooked, but I don't think it's bad. It's handmade. It's it's uh, it's not Hallmark. So let's see what these panels all look like now that they're drying. And then you guys might see cards made with some of these. I save all of my backgrounds. I have like a great big folder that I keep them in. So like when I'm in a rut and don't know what I'm going to do, that I grab these, um, that I grab these out of my stash, and I just start stamping or die cutting or whatever out of them. So let's take a look at these. 
This one I think is stunning. Um, I am going to cut it down. I have to figure out how I want to cut it down. So that's why we haven't done that yet. This is going to be a probably an under the water scene. Good night all. Hope all good and fun crafting. Sean doesn't feel good right now. I think he's headed to bed. That's why the birds are screaming. This one is super cool with all the nuggets of color. This is just a plain... I don't know what I'm going to do with that. I don't love this one. This one, I think, has some great potential. This is really still wet, so I'm afraid to cut it down, so I'm not going to do anything. Definitely an ocean scene. Uh, so Lisa gave me an idea to do for an ocean scene. I know that she bought the stamps to make this, but she's still cleaning her craft room, so I might just do it. This one, I'm telling you guys, this is going to make a heck of a, of a galaxy. So I would start using blacks and like navy blues over this, and it would be phenomenal. Then splatter it. This is a great background. This one here could be a start of a back of a um, of a galaxy. This one, I don't know what I would do. Probably the same thing. This one, I actually think could be pretty. What do you guys think of this purple one? I wish that I could have uh, seen that my embossing had um, sunk there because I would have fixed that, but I might go in with an embossing pen and add some more to it. This one's a straight up an ocean. This one again would be a good galaxy. And this is by far my least favorite one out of all of them. So, but weren't these fun? I mean, like we've been on, oh, we've been on an hour now, but that's a lot of panels for an hour. And then these again, these are the start of something. I don't know what they'll be. You went off. I want to see how you do a galaxy. Do you want, do you want to see that now, Rick? Or do you want to see that on a live? Because I've got like 29 more to do. Because I'm, I made a deal with my friend. How about we do a galaxy tomorrow? And what stinks is that I don't know that we have... I don't know that we have a space stamp per se, but we'll figure it out. All right. Thank you, Rick, for giving me permission for the next time. All right, you guys, that is all that I have. I'm going to go say hi to Sean before he's like completely out. But by far, this card, where, where is it? This, this right here. This makes my heart happy. And this will be going up on the website at some point because I think it's outstanding. I'm going to add some bling to it and add some more stuff to it. But I love this. And this was so simple. All right. Good night, guys. I'll talk to you tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye.